They say the best place to start any story is at the beginning. Problem is, we're not there anymore. And if life has taught us anything, it's that you can't live life backwards. I'm Casey, and this is Dan. And this is our crew, Hudson, Otto, Rochelle, and of course, little Tina. Join us as we sail the world on our yacht hindsight, leave the past behind, and live life forward. Welcome to Sailing Hindsight. After a long day of snorkeling at Pigeon Island, which was amazing, we settled in and got ready for the long overnight sail to St. Martin. We've been waiting a long time to leave Guadalupe and we're all really excited, but as we come around the northern edge of the island and start to heel over, Otto's a little bit perturbed. So we're gonna put some sail up here in a minute. We haven't been able to because we're going dead downwind and the apparent wind has been lower than the speed that we're motoring at. And it's been pretty low, six, five, six knots, and we want to make some time. So, but it's come up here in the last 10 minutes, and so we're gonna make a turn here, get a better angle, and get on our way. Oh, the windows are going this way. Everything's going this way. Everything's on the couch. The floor is so flat. Otto does tend to get seasick from time to time, and this unfortunately was one of those occasions. But after a quick disco nap, we moved on into our night sail and he was right as rain. Unfortunately, this will be Rochelle's last sail on hindsight. She's been a great help to us and we're really sad to see her go, but she's leaving for a great opportunity and we took one last chance to try to get her on going. <laughs>
but we got a beautiful rainbow that I don't know if you're able to see it. just complimenting ourselves on an exemplary overnight sale, my first, and all of a sudden I noticed something didn't look quite right on the general thriller. After adding a new shackle and pin to the tack of the Genoa to our boat jobs list, we proceed to the Simpson Bay Bridge. Are you ready to go through the most infamous bridge in the Caribbean? Ten to two twenty. So just wiring up some stuff. Hopefully, I do it right. Don't fry our whole boat. So the problem is, we have this end, which is a European plug, and we need this one, which is the plug that they use here at the marina. So we can't just go from this to this. We have to have this adapter in the middle that plugs. So we plug ours into this one, 32, and then, or 36, sorry, and then this one goes into here, and this one goes into the shore power and changes it to 16, I think. Okay, we're about to throw the switch. Let's see if there's explosions. Yay! Woo!
had the boat. You know, it's a boat, so there are quite a few. But one of the more annoying things is that when you are sailing and you're sitting here doo -doo 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 -doo, sailing along, and then if the boat is heeled over this way, you want something to like hold on to. There's nothing to hold on to, so you end up holding on to this, or you stand here like this, and so Dan is sewing these new little rails. are not operating and the closest one is over the bridge so we're gonna be in for a bit of a hike so that we can get cash to pay the taxi so that we can go that way <laughs> the boys are not happy Shelf, finish up some boat jobs while I decorate for Hudson's birthday and Otto has decided he's a budding cinematographer and has asked to film his first segment. We give him a shot and well, definitely needs a little bit of work on content, but I love the enthusiasm. Let us know in the comments below what you think. It's like midnight 30, I lost track of time. Um, I was just dealing with Hudson who was having a hard time going to sleep because, you know, it's his last day of being seven and he was distraught that he didn't get to do all the things he wanted to do. And I noticed under the floorboards that there was like a, a vibration that sounded like a bilge pump kind of going and given the problems that we were having lately with the washing machine, I was like, crap, did we break a line? Is something going? And I opened the engine room and um, I'll insert some video here, um, but I went into the engine room and there was, the water pump was going off for the, for the internal water, for the fresh water system. And so I woke Dan up and I was like, hey, what's going on? I went up top and there was an outlet just spitting water out the same way like when the engine's running or the Jenny's running, but none of that was running. And so, and out of a new outlet that I hadn't noticed before. <laughs> So I woke Dan up and he said it was the water system trying to purge air out of the system. And I was like, well, that's great, but wait, why is there air in the system? So we looked, pulled up the floorboards and as you'll see, 
in the next video, there was just water flooding in to the bottom of the boat. Temporary panic. Um, woke Rochelle up, got everyone together in one spot, and we realized that one of the fixtures on the cold water going into the water heater had exploded or broken or cracked or something. There was water going everywhere. So then we shut off the fresh water system, managed to get pump and get all of that water into the bilge and then there was still more water coming and I tasted it and it definitely tasted salty but that could just be residual salt in the ground and because it's a boat so we are now keeping an eye on it and waiting to see if it's the seacock leaking that was just replaced and repaired or if it's just more water from the original break so it's gonna be a long night <laughs> hours of troubleshooting, lots of rescue tape, and we're ready to go for now. We can't find a spare part here in St. Martin, so that means we'll just keep looking along our way. After we do the fix, we attend a really cool life raft demonstration at Island Waterworld. They actually put off a couple of older ones to let us see how they work, and it was really helpful and informative. Given our water leak issues last night, I'm really hoping we never have to use this information, but the kids thought it was great. And Yeah. No, yeah. Not. On this particular one, the lid is kind of a bit loose because the straps came off, but now he's going to be pulling. And this is our 12 man life raft. We don't know how bar big this apartment is, but we'll soon find out. This is a first for me, too. I'm excited to see this one. So now, see the really long line that he's been pulling out again? Oh, we're getting somewhere. What's happening, shrimp? Is, there, is this like an endless line or something? I mean, oh, I think we're here somewhere. Okay, ready for seeing the big one, guys? One, two, three, go! Next week on Sailing Hindsight, we celebrate Hudson's birthday with brunch and balloon animals. Rochelle heads back to the United States and we start getting ready for our first charter, which includes, among other things, changing the poop pipes. If you don't want to fall in the ocean, like and subscribe, get notifications on, ding, and then you're done.